How's it going, everybody? I wanted to make this video because I am so excited about what Taylor Otwell announced in his keynote at Laracon. He, he announced several things, all very amazing stuff. Really excited about um, how the folks in the Laravel world are really pushing this web development thing, like just they like Laravel, um, Rails, they just do that. Like, so I spent like all night. Okay, maybe not all night. So I watched his keynote for like a couple of hours. And then I was so pumped with adrenaline. I was just working on stuff. So I wanted to talk about the the session, the section of his keynote, Taylor Otway's keynote. Um, probably you should go find out. Um, you should go find the keynote when it's live. On the, I think it should be on the Laravel channel. So Laracon US 2024, Taylor Otway's keynote, we announced a bunch of amazing things that's coming to the Laravel framework. But there's this thing they made called Inertia JS, which is framework agnostic. And it got me really excited. Like when I found Inertia a couple of years ago, I never knew that even at the form it was at 1.0, it was really good for all my needs. Most of all, like all my needs, of course. So of course, you can always make it better. But the announcement, the six features Taylor announced that will come into Inertia 2.0, is so, just so good and I had to share. And uh, so even though Taylor Tease about it on Twitter, classic Taylor Tease, I, I wasn't prepared for the level of excitement I was going to feel after seeing what it actually was or those features were. So um, so you might be saying, Kelvin, aren't you a full-stack JavaScript developer? Why are you excited about the Laravel thing? Like I said, inertia is not just the Laravel thing, it's framework agnostic, and it's literally is what makes the boring JavaScript stack possible. All right. And um I use the boring JavaScript stack to build salesguys.com, hackfish.io, and also my new course, which is um, build 50 products in 50 days. All the products are gonna be built with the boring JavaScript stack. So it's a big deal for me that inertia is having so much love because um, there's been rumor that, okay, initial feature complete is marked as done and uh, we're not going to see anything um, new, but yeah, this initial 2.0 has been demoed and um, I'm just going to stop drilling over initial 2.0 right now and just talk about these, the features, right? So we're going to start with the very first one, which is what Taylor started with. I think it's more like the foundation for every other feature that we're going to discuss in this video. All right. So the the this feature is called async request. So the way inertia work, right? So if you don't know what inertia is, inertia is just this little lightweight glue that lets you pair your front end um, library or framework like um, React, Vue, or Svelte with a very robust server side framework like Sales, Laravel, or Rails. So instead of you building two separate applications where one is your API and the other one is like your SPA. So if you want an SPA like experience but just want one monolithic code base and not sacrifice anything. Inertia is the best way to do it. And I've been doing it for like a while. Like I said, most of my products are using it. So, but Inertia, everything is synchronous because it wants to mimic this traditional server-centric um, way of building website. So in a, in a server-centric way of building a website, when you click on the link or go to a page, it's a synchronous thing, right? It's synchronous. So the page loads, everything has to wait for it to come. So, but if you're going to be a true spa, if the app is going to be like a single page application, even though we like the synchronous um, way of doing things in inertia, certain things have to be synchronous because we don't want to, like you, if you follow me online, you know my, my classic um, retort at um, server-side purists is that I don't want to click a button on X, for example, the the like button and you make a server side request before I know that I like something, right? So we need to do a sync request. And this has been a pain in the community. Even I myself, when when I built Hackfish or IO, like the Hackfish editor needed um certain synchronous request features, but it wasn't available by the time. And there was like an open PR like trying to address this. And John Tarenik, who is the creator of Inertia, said that, you know what, we're going to look at this. And I didn't know that they were prepping 2.0. All right. So before we walk around that, even in our initial app, so because if you want like some async thing going on, like you want your own loading um, states, 
because inertia has its own loading synchronous state. But if you don't want to see that for some certain um, interaction, you would have to do fetch as you suppose. That's like a, it, it works, but it would be better. So inertia 2.0 is going to come with async request. And um, just like I said, it is the foundation of all the other features coming to Subido. Most of the features, we don't know if this is the complete feature set that was demoed, but moving on. So the next thing coming to um, Inertia 2.0 is polling. So um, it, this would be, and I never knew I, would, I needed this until Taylor demoed it. So if you have like, uh, you want to do real time, but you don't really need WebSocket because it's not really, you don't want to be true real time with WebSocket and, you know, server sent events and all, but you want to poll for data, especially for like maybe like a leaderboard or like, yeah, like a dashboard that some certain part of it needs to be real time. And that's going to come built in with polling that doesn't use WebSocket. So, of course, this is, you're going to use it. If you're going to use it, you're not going to like use it very, very heavily. If you need to really do real time, you're going to reach out to WebSocket. But it's really good to know that there's this convenience for you to just um, use polling that's baked into Inertia to like get near real time data from your backend. Yeah, so feature number three, when visible. This one is cool. I, I think I like it. And what it does is that it's like a wrapper or an implementation over the intersection observer. If you don't know what intersection observer is, I did a video about that somewhere you could go check out. I'll link to it. But it's like when certain parts of the page is in the viewport, fetch data. All right, so you could defer the fetching of data except the user's view, and that makes sense so that you don't just you know fetch everything. So maybe like in the dashboard, yeah, so there's something there, there's some heavy compute that needs to be done below, like to get data, but the user hasn't seen it yet. There's no need to send that in the first in the first request. That is just amazing. So you, it, um, Inertia is going to ship with for the front end, it's going to ship it with um, when visible components at least for view. That's one. I can remember, but I don't know how you're going to implement it in React as well. But it's going to be like a component when visible, where you could be like, okay, you wrap the certain um, elements with this component. And be like, when this element is visible or this part of the viewport is visible, fetch this data or to get the props. Amazing. And that leads us to feature number four because you could already guess that if if we could fetch data when a component or an element is visible, that means we can apply it for infinite scrolling. I haven't had the need to implement infinite scrolling in my apps, but probably I will in one of the Project 50 products. But this is fun to see that Inertia is going to have it baked in. So leveraging the when visible component and the feature, you could just easily implement infinite scrolling for like maybe like a, like a list of pictures or a list of products. All right, so, so that's just amazing. That's just amazing. Then uh, feature number five is prefetching. So prefetching is a, it's something that um, frameworks like Next, Nox, and I think um, Turbo in Rails have. So it's this handy way of um, optimistically fetching the the next page the next page when a user hover on the link. So instead of like making the fetch when I click, you make the fetch when I hover so that when I click, I get to see the page almost near instant. That's just brilliant. So Inertia is going to have prefetching. So these little um, niceties is just going to make using Inertia a much more robust alternative to things like Next, Remix, and I'm really excited about it. So prefetch is going to come to the framework, um, to Inertia, really. And also, that means it's going to come to the Boeing JavaScript stack because, of course, we use Inertia so we could leverage and use all this cool thing. So last but not the least is the third props. Um, this one is really interesting. So like I said before, Inertia is synchronous, meaning that it loads the page with the data that um, the page needs. It's one of the reasons why I, I liked it. So we don't have to see loading spinners all the time. But I, I must admit that there are certain cases where the data you need to load, like maybe in um, analytics, you're doing a lot of computation. So instead of like, you know, the page should take a longer time to load, we can load the page and then defer loading of the props. So when the props are ready, they get sent to the page. So it's more this, it's, it's, 
it's looking like a like a true SPA all over again. So I don't really know how I feel about it, but I want to see how. I have to try it out to be like, okay, I think I like it. But it's it's hopefully we don't get spinner fest or too much loading state. But um, with the deferred props, there's also grouped deferred props where you could group certain expensive props like they need a lot of database computation at all. So you could be like, okay, we defer this group. But we could load this certain prop. So certain so why I like it is that unlike um the traditional way of doing things, you could actually opt in into like, okay, this should be deferred, this should not be deferred. So you could load um data that can come really quickly. And those that will take a while, you defer it so that the page can still be um usable. So I think that's fair. So yeah, that's it. So quick recap. Async request is the foundation for all these niceties coming to Inertia 2.0. Then there's polling for when you need to fetch near real time. You need Inertia to pull your backend for data for like things like leaderboard scores and stuff. Then when visible, you get to fetch data when a particular section of the of your app or your page is visible. Infinite scrolling, which leverage on when visible for like infinite scrolling, which is another form of pagination technique that we all use to like apps like Instagram and stuff use it all the time, even Twitter. Then prefetching, like before when I hover on the link, you fetch the page already so that when I click on it, it's fast to load. I love it. Of course, anything to let the user see what they want to see quickly. Then deferred props, instead of loading expensive props, letting instead of letting expensive props be the bottleneck to a page, you sort of defer them and just load the page with the props that are already ready. And you could also do the um, grouped deferred props. So um, all these features we'll be shipping in Inertia 2.0 are going to be released sometime, sometime in October, which I can't wait, like a month, give or take. It's like it's going to be a while before it gets to us. And of course, you're going to need backend changes because it's going to be like a symphony between the backend and the frontend. So the frontend is already handled by the Inertia core team and also for the Laravel adapter and I think for the Rails 2 also handled by the initial core team so I will definitely be paying close attention so I could implement it for the adapter I wrote for sales which is what is also a component piece of the Boeing JavaScript stack so that I, we can be a feature parity with initial 2.0 and leverage all that feature. I think I'm going to hold up with building um the the first product so I'm going to keep building the part but I won't ship I was going to like ship in September, sometimes September, but maybe I will do in October so that I can um, upgrade the code base so that the users buying the course and the code bases will have access to like initial 2.2 and they don't have to go through the painful update themselves. So that will be fun. So you could also go check out and um, just see what the product is all about. Then, yeah, I believe... This is very exciting. If you've been, if you've been, if you're tired of how complex it is to build full stack application with JavaScript, you should definitely give the Boeing JavaScript stack a try. If you're a JavaScript dev and you just want to leave the the nightmares of things like using Next and you know just want simplicity, but you just want to ship stuff, definitely the quickest way to give Inertia a try if you're a JavaScript developer is to do so with the ball in JavaScript stack. And it's as simple as running MPX create sales. So yeah, let me know what you think. If Let me know in the comments if you use Inertia. If you don't, also let me know. But if you do use Inertia, let me know which of the features you are excited about in Inertia 2.0.